Hey fam, I want you to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin, and don't forget to turn on your notifications. All right, folks, uh, let's not go to our next story, and that is dealing with Lieutenant Governor Justin Fairfax. Uh, today, uh, on um, uh, first and foremost, uh, just the Fairfax over the weekend released uh, a statement uh, where he said that he passed a lie detector test. And this came in advance of one of his accusers, Professor Vanessa Tyson, who spoke to CBS this morning uh, and Gail Keane describing the encounter. You're there in the hotel standing by the door. Yep. And then what happens? He crosses the room um, and, you know, kind of goes through his luggage, finds some paperwork, mm -hmm. right, um, which is what I assumed we were there for, and good. Uh, and then he crosses back around the bed and comes over to me, and I'm still by the door, mm -hmm. uh, and he kisses me. And um, you think... Well, I was surprised. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, like for, for a variety of reasons, I was surprised. But it wasn't unwelcome per se. You're saying it wasn't unwelcome and you're kissing him and you're okay with the kissing. Yeah, I'm okay, okay with kissing. Yeah. You know, and he kind of gently takes my hands um, and, and guides me towards the bed. And we're still kissing, mm -hmm. right? And it's completely consensual. Mm -hmm. He guides me to the bed and then, you know, he sits down on the bed. And what happens... From there, you know, it, it, we start kissing lying down, but on the very edge of the bed. Okay, so I'm following. And then yeah. what happens? Mm -hmm. We're kissing lying down. And we're kissing. Like, so our heads are mm -hmm. level with each other. Mm -hmm. And then it was like my neck didn't work. What do you mean? It, 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 it was like I couldn't, I couldn't feel my neck. I couldn't hold my head up. He's using his hand on the back of my neck. And I still didn't know what was going wrong. I thought there was something wrong with my neck. And he's pushing down and pushing down and I couldn't hold my neck up. And I didn't know what was going on. I honestly didn't know what was going on. And then the next thing I know, like my head is like literally in his crotch and I'm choking and gagging. And, you know, I couldn't say anything because I'm choking and gagging. Is he saying anything to you, Vanessa? Nothing. There's nothing. And what are you thinking at this moment? To be honest, I'm in total shock. Like... Do you say anything to him? No. I didn't know what to say. I... I, I was just... I was completely caught off guard. I was almost as if I was dumbstruck. Now, in the interview, Vanessa Tyson also said that she would willingly participate in a public hearing before the Virginia legislature. Gail King asked her, as related to why not the law enforcement investigation, and she said that as a political science professor, she knows that public officials, that they get passes as a result of those type of investigations. Uh, as I said, uh, Justin Fairfax, uh, he uh, voluntarily took and passed two polygraph tests that, quote, demonstrate the accusations made against the lieutenant governor are false. Um, his folks rejects a hearing as a political circus. I want to go to our panel here, uh, Johanna LeBlanc. And Michael Brown, and so I want to I want to deal with the statement first made. Johanna, I'll start with you. So Tyson said she would participate in a legislative hearing before the Virginia legislature, but not a not the um, not a not file a complaint. We know that the Suffolk County DA in Boston has said, who is a woman, a black woman, has said that if Tyson filed a, uh, a a complaint, she would investigate. Does it make sense to say, I'll participate in an impeachment hearing, but not a law enforcement investigation? Your thoughts? Well, um, 
it's kind of questionable, right? But however, I'm sure that she has an, an attorney representing her, and that's probably the strategy that they've come up with in order to come up with a resolution as it pertains to this matter. So I'm not going to assess the credibility or of her testimony or which route is... No, 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 no. I, I, no, no, no. I'm, not, I'm not asking you to assess her credibility. What, what I'm saying is... A, one of the pro the process that she says mm -hmm. she will participate in is a political one. Mm -hmm. The other process is a legal one. Mm -hmm. The statute of limitations hasn't run out. Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to understand why blow off the legal mm -hmm. investigation for the political one. Yeah, I've, obviously there are some questions and, and people will definitely question her motive. Um, is this a political, um, do you have a political agenda or do you want justice, right? Especially if statute of limitations have not run out. Why aren't, why aren't you taking that path, right? But for whatever reason, she and her attorney have decided the path that we're going to take is the political route, which makes her story a little bit more questionable and makes people want to um, ask, do you have a political motive or do you really care about justice? Michael Brown. And that's a legitimate concern. I mean, clearly we're now in, a, in an era where the pendulum may be now coming back a little bit. Not not believing women, because we have to believe and we have to listen and then let folks, whoever the court of opinion is, uh, make the decision about credibility. Um, but to not go to law enforcement first, I think certainly hurts credibility. Not that you still can't go to an impeachment hearing, but it just seems odd that you don't take the the natural first step first, which is filing a police report. Then if you end up in front of an, imp an impeachment hearing, then, then, then you do. I think the other part that makes, that goes to credibility, um, has, to, has a lot to do with when these allegations come up, especially for people, and again, I understand Me Too movement has just begun and now obviously the pendulum had swung back the other way, um, but, uh, Clearly, when people have been running for office for many, many years, have been on the on the on front street, and then allegations come out, it does not excuse the behavior. And if they are found to have committed these acts, all justice against them, and they should pay the price. But we have to try to figure out. And it's going to be difficult, certainly above my pay grade, Roland, on figuring out who that court of opinion is, because a lot of these cases do not end up in court anymore, especially if the statute of limitations has run. So what do we do? Who's the arbiter? Who decides? Because let's say that she does go to uh, an impeachment hearing. Justin Fer Lieutenant Governor says he's done two lie detector tests, passed them both. So then what? We're still in the same he said, she said at the end of the day, unless there's some other kind of uh, other proof. And, you know, that's one of the challenges, you know, because I, I myself, I, I, I'm a women, women's rights advocate, right? I believe in women empowerment. Uh, but, you know, is it, are we going to go through due process? Or are we going to allow the court of public opinion to decide who is guilty and who's not? And, and in some cases, as we know, when it comes to allegations of sexual harassment, um, once you've been accused of such type of act, your reputation is tarnished, whether or not you have been found guilty of this act in the court of law. And in most cases, as, as my co-panelist indicated, most of these cases don't even go to court. The court of public opinion makes a decision and we go from there. And people lose their entire careers, their entire livelihood based on a mere accusation, right? And, and again, I'm not questioning um, the woman's credibility here, but I'm just making a general statement. Is a mere accusation sufficient for someone to lose their entire livelihood and all that they've worked so hard for? So we have to ask ourselves that question as a society. I, I am, my final comment on this is, I am still troubled of, with, the, with the insistence of saying, I will participate in a political process, but not a legal one. When you have the DA, who is a black woman, who has said, if a complaint is filed, I will investigate, that is a legal process where somebody could be subpoenaed, where someone could not lie under oath, um, where you could actually investigate what happened. The Virginia legislature 
has no investigative powers here. The, 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 the Virginia legislature has no jurisdiction to literally compel people who might have been there in Massachusetts on that night in question to testify. And so I, I'm just, you know, and I would love to interview, um, interview Dr. Tyson or her lawyers to get a better sense of that understanding. And in fact, what's also a very interesting note, the Fairfax team, uh, so Deborah Katz is an attorney for Vanessa Tyson. Uh, and then apparently they hired the exact same lie detector um, uh, tester that was used by the woman who accused Brett Kavanaugh, who was hired by Deborah Katz. So quite an interesting legal legal decision there uh, by the Justin Fairfax campaign. Uh, we shall see what's what next with this story. Roll the mark unfiltered. Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Martin Unfiltered by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible.